Good afternoon, everyone. We are glad to welcome you to our SAP Tech Talks webinar. A few words regarding the event organization. The webinar will be recorded and then posted on our YouTube channel. You may ask all your questions in the Q&A field. Our today's speakers are Susanna Klimenkova and Yanina Tarasenka. And the topic of their webinar is the art of agility, becoming a better agile leader. Colleagues, the floor is yours. Thank you, Hannah, for a nice introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Susanna, and I'm experienced agile coach for working for SAP as the account. Today, me and my colleague, Yana, we will be discussing the topic of agile leadership. Thank you for joining us. Hello, colleagues. My name is Janina Tresenko, and uh, I'm also an agile coach. Uh, we are working with Susanna on the same SAP project for about three years together. And today we are going to share with you some Agile tips. During our talk today, we will discuss how to become a successful Agile leader. We will start by better understanding what is Agile and how it can help us. We will also face together most common challenges that every leader struggles with. Micromanagement, lack of common vision, low employee morale, and how to measure success of your work as Agile leader. At the end, we will also spend some time on questions and answers. So, let's start. But actually, before we start, we have some questions for you. Are you a delivery lead, a stream lead, or a team lead, or even a project manager? Or do you plan to be one in near future? So if yes, yeah, this talk is actually helpful for you and your future learning path. So as leaders, you probably work already with Agile in your projects. You probably also were on some trainings, made some certifications. But is this Agile knowledge something you can use actually on a daily basis. Can it somehow help you with your role as a lead? Together with Yana, we believe that the usage of Agile is something useful for you. You can become a great leader, an Agile leader. As a manager, you can experience various problems and feel sometimes overwhelmed. It can happen that in your teams, your colleagues are missing the big picture, common goals and visions. You can experience with your team also low employee morale, often caused by poor decision making and micromanagement. Another common challenge are miscommunications, misunderstandings. This is bringing us to unresolved problems and it can cause also decrease in team's productivity. As you know, working in silos and lack of alignment can cause delays and inefficiencies. This lack of collaboration and product ownership lead at the end even to project delays and innovation stagnation. So as you can see, there are a lot of possible challenges in life of a lead. And here is the question, could Agile help us in such difficult situations? How to react to the mentioned challenges? We will check it now together. So let's start here a little bit from common ground. Why are we talking actually about Agile? Here are some simple three tr truths. So gathering all requirements at the start of the project is almost impossible requirements will always change. There will be always more to do than time and money allows us. So how to work in such conditions? According to the 17th Annual State of Agile report, 71% of suretakers use Agile as their software delivery lifecycle. At the top benefit of using Agile, improve collaboration and better alignment with the business. In current VUCA world, we need to be flexible 
and Agile allows us to be flexible in project management and software development. And in the centers are collaboration, adaptability, and continuous improvement. Okay, looks quite interesting. But what does Agile actually mean? Jana, tell us here a little bit more. Thank you, Susanna. So colleagues, let's speak a little bit about what Agile means. And my first question to you would be, do you know this picture? And I guess that your answer would be probably yes, because every Agile training starts with it. So let's speak a little bit about the definition of Agile Mindset. So this definition is based on Dr. Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, the New Psychology of Success. And in this book, uh, Dr. Dweck suggested us two kinds of mindset, fixed one and growth one. If we speak about the first mindset, fixed mindset, this is a traditional mindset where people stick to what they know and um, avoid new opportunities. They view obstacles as something to be avoided and have a predetermined view of the world. If we speak with you about the second type of mindset, growth mindset, so here vice versa, this is the essence of the agile mindset. People with this kind of mindset are open to new ideas and approaches. They embrace challenges, they think creatively, they see setbacks as opportunities for learning. If we check with you the second picture, so this picture belongs to Dr. Ahmed Sikhi, who adapted Dweck's research to define the agile mindset. And he incorporated the key elements of the Agile Manifesto and divided his definition into three factors. And these three factors are the following. The first factors are values. And I think that you know them from the Agile Manifesto, like individuals' interactions, working software, customer collaboration, and responding to change. After that second uh, part, these are 12 principles. I'm sure you also know them from the Agile Manifesto. Customer satisfaction, regular deliveries, team autonomy, face-to-face -face, face -face interactions, etc. And also multiple, multiple practices. Some select agile estimation techniques, user story creation, iteration planning, etc. And of course, if you would like to adopt an Agile mindset, you need to incorporate first these values and these principles into your daily work. And what kind of practices you will, will incorporate and their implementation will depend on your context. Let's try to answer with you to the next question, when we need to use Agile. A lot of you may ask whether Agile is a silver bullet for all the projects. And of course, if we try to find the answer, probably it will vary on who you ask. So to gain a clearer understanding, let's refer to you uh, with you, sorry, to the Kinevin model. And this model, it was developed by Dave Snowden, and it helps us to classify all the situations and our possible reactions to them into four domains. You see those domains on the picture. So the simple domain, complicated domain, complex domain, and chaotic one. So, uh, sorry. So if we speak about the first domain, simple domain. So in this domain, cause and effect are absolutely clear. And the predefined algorithm is used to respond. A good example may be cooking a cake. So for achieve the result, you just need to have a list of predefined actions. You need to follow them one by one and achieve your result. And in the most of cases, your result will be absolutely great. The next domain is the complicated one. So in this domain, uh, it's already involves less clear cause and effect and requires some expertise to be solved. A good example may be building up a rocket and sending it uh, to the space. So probably also here you need a list of predefined actions and those actions are absolutely clear, but not all the people can do that. You need to be an expert to achieve the result. If we speak with you about the next domain, the complex one, so this domain has a retrospective understanding of cause and effect, requiring experimentation and adjustment. A good example may be raising up a child or changing the culture in your company. You may never know what kind of result you will achieve by the end. Yeah? But what can be helpful for you? This is receiving the feedback and make needed adjustments. 
And the last dom domain is the chaotic one. So here we lack any connection between cause and effect. And this domain necessitates immediate action and subsequent adjustment. A good example may be volcano eruption, earthquake, or COVID-19, for example. In such situation, we never know what will happen on the next step, but we also understand that we need to take some actions and after that adjust accordingly. So if we speak about Agile, we can guess that it's best suited for the complex and chaotic domains where requirements are unclear and a trial and error approach is necessary. In contrast, if you have a complicated or simple domain, so probably here requirements are clear and steps are well defined, Agile may not be needed. So we would like to say that uh, the same approach applies to the project. If on your project you know all the requirements, please do not try to implement any kind of Agile because it won't be necessary for you, it won't be useful. Here the waterfall approach or any kind of iterative approach may help you. On the next slide, let's also try to speak about the Agile trends that we have today. And the first trend will be, of course, scaled Agile. So we know that today organizations adopt Agile practices at an enterprise level and they use the frameworks like SAFE and LESS. And here also very important to mention that for the organization to be Agile, it's not only about the IT teams to be Agile, it's also about all other parts to implement Agile, uh, just to participate in this value creation. Uh, the next uh, trend is the DevOps integration. We also know that Agile teams today embrace DevOps practices for efficiency of software delivery. And it's quite difficult to imagine the team today without, for example, CI/CD practices or any other technical innovations. Speaking about the DevOps integration, it's also very important to mention that when we say DevOps, uh, very often we think only about some technical practices as I have just mentioned, CI/CD, or working with the telemetry after the production deployment, etc. But we need to say that when speaking about DevOps, uh, uh, it means to have all the practices uh, that we have during the value creation chain, starting from understanding the user pain till receiving the feedback from our users and make uh, needed adjustments. Let's speak about the third uh, trend. This is the Agile Beyond IT. And today we know that Agile methodologies are applied to non-IT domains like marketing, HR, finance, and project management. Also, we mentioned in the beginning for the organization to be successful, yeah, it's not only about IT teams to be Agile, but for the whole organization. And this third trend also proved that. Let's check the next uh, trend, and this is the Agile in remote work environment. So remote Agile teams use different collaboration tools and digital platforms for effective communication. And I think that all of us after 2020 learned very well how to do that. The fifth trend is Lean integration. So Agile and Lean principles are combined for holistic product development and project management. We know with you that Agile, it's mostly about how to achieve the result and Lean, it's mostly about how to set up your flow. But these two approaches make the perfect combination on the work. And the sixth, uh, last but not least trend, it's Agile coaching and leadership. So today, skilled coaches and leaders guide Agile transformations and empower teams. Let's also speak a little bit about the biggest challenges in Agile and the biggest challenges the organizations uh, may face while implementing Agile on the enterprise level. And let me also say that the statistics that you see on your screen, it's not something that we created, but we will refer with you to the 70th annual state of Agile report that Zuzana previously mentioned. Also would like to say that this report is available on the site Digital AI, and all of you can of course download it and to check the latest trends. So strongly recommend it. Let's check what the biggest challenges in adopting Agile are. 
So we see that 36% of people said that the leadership doesn't understand uh, what the agile means and they put the roadblocks up knowingly or unknowingly. 33% of people mentioned the teams are not empowered to be self-organized and self-sufficient. So probably here we're speaking about the micromanagement and this is one of the challenges that we are going to speak a little bit later. 29% mentioned that business teams do not understand what Agile does or can do. And 28% of people mentioned lack of clear priorities and or direction. So also, I think, will be very related to one of the challenges about lack of common vision that we are going to speak about today. Among other stuff that people mentioned in the surveys were everything is siloed. Yeah, it means that everyone is working separately and probably know just the part of his or her work without knowing what is happening around. Yeah, and uh, not knowing this process and the value creation chain. Uh, also, also a lot of people mentioned this culture clash. And the last one was no executive sponsorship. And now, Susanna, I'm giving the floor to you. Thank you very much. Imagine following situation. After agile transformation, you work in sprints, you have dailies, you have also roles like product owner, scrum master. Many of you already were part of safe transformation. And after some time, you start to notice something is still not right. We have all various kinds of pro problems. Maybe agile is not right for us. This can often happen if we focus only on doing agile. We focus too much on the processes. Being agile, that's the catch. It means adopting a mindset that allows us to be flexible and adaptable in our approaches to agile. It is about understanding that the frameworks are just tools and they should not restrict our way of thinking. Instead of getting stuck in one framework, being agile means that we can explore different approaches, methodologies, and they should be aligned also with our organizational needs. So in summary, while doing agile involves implementation of agile processes, being agile goes beyond that. It means embracing change and continuously improving our way of working. And this is often challenging. So let's move on to our challenges. First one, micromanagement. I will share with you a recipe, how to make a team ineffective. So let's use now a little bit of irony. First, team cannot work without you. As a lead, you are always needed. You also request updates on every task. Next step, your team won't take any initiative on their own. Team hesitates to make any kind of decisions. They are afraid to make something wrong, afraid of doing any mistake. And of course, you feel uneasy when you are not in control of every detail. And now you reached level zero percentage of effectiveness and 100 percentage of micromanagement. So let's talk now a little bit more serious about the negative side effects of micromanagement. Higher stress level, reduced team morale, and lower productivity. And that's why it is quite crucial for every lead to find the balance between providing guidance and allowing your team to work autonomously for optimal results. How to help your team to be more effective? Let's check following picture. It shows us based on alignment and autonomy where micromanagement is and also where our ideal destination is, aligned autonomy. Micromanagement culture exists in an environment with low autonomy, leading to low alignment in a team. So in short, no high level purpose, just show up and follow orders. 
leaders tell the people what the problem is and also how to solve the problems. The exact opposite is aligned autonomy. In this stage, we have high autonomy and high alignment as shown in the picture. When teams reach this stage of aligned autonomy, it takes time and practice. We can now speak of motivated individuals working in self-organized teams, and they have also deep understanding of their customer needs. Flexibility is also crucial in aligned autonomy. It allows the team to respond quickly to the changes in the requirements. So to summary, the main goal of aligned autonomy is to strive for perfection in meeting customer needs. And this is achieved through continuous experimentation and real world validation. And Agile needs this aligned autonomy to be functional. How to reach this aligned autonomy in your team. And I have another question for you. How many times did you reach out to your Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, sorry? Do you check also some Agile communities? Your Scrum Masters could help you with following steps. First, try to establish clear roles and responsibilities by conducting working agreement workshops. This will ensure that everyone understands their individual task and how they contribute to overall team success. What do you think of daily? Is it useful or wasted time? What if I tell you that even such short meeting is quite crucial for the effective communication? Every lead should encourage collaboration with the help of such regular meetings as daily retrospectives, reviews, planning, or, or refinement sessions. Additionally, you could always create a communication plan that uh, outlines the expectations of, for sharing information and updates. How often do you collaborate with your product managers or business partners? They could actually help you with this step. A shared goal and vision are crucial for aligning the team's effort. Usage of techniques like PI planning can establish shared vision goals roadmaps for the team. During sprint planning, refinement session, you can ensure, always try to ensure, that the teams actually understand how they work is aligned with the overall picture. Next step is conflict resolution. And this is crucial for maintaining team alignment. Conduct regular retrospectives or one-to-one -one meetings. You can address there any conflict or issue that may, may arise. You could always use also your working agreement as a tool for capturing lessons learned and best practice. And by following these steps, you can help your Agile team to achieve aligned autonomy enabling them to work more effectively towards shared goals. Okay, so let's go now to the second challenge. Jana? Thank you, Susanna. Uh, the second challenge, and we are going to speak about, uh, with you about lack of common vision. So uh, in an Agile project, uh, lack of common vision within a team can be detrimental to its success. Despite the organization's efforts sometimes to split into smaller, self-organized teams, the absence of shared understanding can lead to team working in isolation or in silos. And also we mentioned it with you as one of the biggest challenges for organization to implement Agile. This can result in a fragmented view of the project with each team focusing on their own priorities and deliverables. And consequently, some hidden dependencies may arise, making it challenging for the organization to integrate different parts of the company effectively. I think that all of us worked in the team and your team had the dependencies from other team. And for example, you needed to implement any kind of feature or user story. And for example, your product owner or any kind of person went to this another team with dependencies and asked them to do something for you. And I'm sure that very often the answer was no, yeah, because this team said, 
that the beta clock was absolutely full and that probably you needed to wait for another five years and probably they will do it for you. Yeah? Why it happened? Because we don't have any common vision, any common goals. So to address this issue, it's crucial for the entire organization to have the same goal, the same roadmap, the same vision, the same priorities coming from top to down, not vice versa. This ensured synchronized delivery and enables teams to collaborate seamlessly. Of course, achieving this ideal state is not easy. It requires a lot of investigation and implementation of strategies that foster communication alignment and shared sense of purpose among team members. Let's also speak a little bit about alignment. In an agile project, alignment within the team is crucial for effective planning and value delivery. But we have a lot of questions ahead of us. Like, for example, how far in advance we should plan and at what level of details for each layer? How often uh, should we inspect and adapt our plans of each layer? To achieve, it's important to, uh, to achieve this alignment, it's important to involve the right people in the plane for the all the layers that go beyond your only one team. This ensures that everyone is moving in the same direction and works toward the shared goals. While there is a common misunderstanding about Agile, that the planning is not needed, and probably you remember why, because we have this value saying us responding to change over following the plan. And very often people says, say that the plan is not needed at all, but it's a big misunderstanding. Planning is a very important part of Agile and we need to remember about it. So, Agile planning allows us for the adjustment and focuses on value delivery rather than just being scope driven. We know that in the waterfall approach, for example, or any kind of iterative approach, when your requirements are clear and you have the agreed scope, of course, your plan will be scope driven. You have the scope, you have the milestone, it's aligned, it should be done, and nothing will change. In Agile, vice versa, we have the planning, but first of all, we value the value, yeah, and our scope can be easily adjusted. So to achieve the alignment, it's essential to have the common vision, common goals, shared planning, shared roadmaps on different levels, especially if we speak about the scale setup. Remember our example with the product owner going to another team and asking this another team to make something for you. And probably the answer will be no, yeah, because the goals are not shared. So all this stuff helps us in setting up the right artifacts, processes, and involving the right people. Let's check with you what are the elements of the effective planning. So first of all, this is the preparation of artifacts like vision, goals, and roadmap. And we need to mention that it can be done, it should be done on different levels, like, for example, company level, portfolio level, program level, team level, any other level. Still, the level of details, of course, would be different. It means that the team roadmap should represent the same idea mentioned in the portfolio roadmap, but, of course, providing much more details. The second element is, of course, this is the alignment on priorities going top-down, scope, dependency management. Based on the roadmap, before any kind of planning, we should know what our priorities and scope are. And if we know that, we can make prior alignment and ensure that the delivery will be done uh, in the ensured uh, time and we can manage the risk appropriately. Let's also remember a little bit about SAFE. So probably you also know that a big part of the time is dedicated to the PI planning preparation. We know that we need to plan a big scope for a quarter, for example, and we understand that such big planning is almost impossible without prior alignment. So, yeah, that is why also product management work a lot on defining the priorities, the scope, and after that, the teams work on dependency management. And the last point, this is the capacity-based planning. 
So the capacity-based planning means that uh, the team capacity is taken into consideration during the planning. The team actively participates in the planning process and has its voice. It means that it's not the product owner or product manager or any other kind of product person pushes uh, the team to take something that they cannot. In Agile frameworks, we have the recommended processes, like for example, in Scrum and in Save. So these are the teams who are making their planning. So they always say what they are able to accomplish within, for example, a sprint, an iteration or the PI based on their estimations, assumptions and experience. In Kanban approach, we have a little bit different uh, method. Yeah, it's called uh, the pool system and it's implemented by work in progress limits technique. So th this technique helps us to control the amount of work that the team may take into progress. If we speak with you about the capacity based planning, one of the most um, important technique to better align this capacity with the planning called estimations. And now we are going to touch one of the one of the most Hollywood topic in Agile. So let me very quickly present you the estimations type. So the first type will be called absolute estimation, which is done in my days or in my hours. It would be great to use such technique probably in the beginning of the project when nothing is known for sure. Still, your customer asks you to provide possible timeline. You may also use this estimation technique as the usual one. Still, be careful because if you work in the agile environment or also probably you remember the picture in the complex environment where nothing is known for sure, so it means that you always will have something unknown. You will always have some kind of risk. And estimating such work in absolute units would be very often difficult and inaccurate. The next estimation approach is called relative estimation. It can be done in story points, in t-shirt sizes, or normalized story points mentioned in the same documentation. It means that we will estimate one item by comparing it with the baseline. Also, probably you remember that before starting with the story points, we usually start with finding the baseline. We try to find a piece of work which would be equal for us as one, yeah, one only in our context. And after that, estimating other, let's say, user stories, features, or anything else, we compare this new feature or user story with the baseline. This estimation type gives us the possibility to include the unknown part and risk into the estimation. It also says that the estimation is only the forecast, not the commitment. And here the discussion, alignment and shared ownership are valued much, much more than the number added to the items. This estimation techniques it would be great to use for the teams who start estimating or uh, for the teams who have some issues with the planning or deliveries. And let's check with you the last estimation approach, which is called no estimation approach. And this is this kind uh, of estimation suggested by the Kanban method. And it means that the team doesn't spend time for adding the estimation, but such team just understands how many items they can take into work for a limited period of time. This approach says it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend time on adding five or eight story point to the item or five or eight days to your item and consider it as a waste of time. But we need to mention that such approach would be great for mature teams with stable deliveries, with great experience and great knowledge of the application. Moreover, the items that let's say you estimate, yeah, but that you don't estimate, this should be uh, of the same size or pretty the same size. And as a conclusion, we would like to say that on the internet, you can find a lot of articles, a lot of descriptions, uh, how to estimate correctly, how to estimate right, how to estimate in the agile way. One thing we would like to highlight is that agile doesn't prohibit any kind of estimation. You can use anything. The most important is that this method helps you in your planning. 
And now let's speak about the next challenge, low employee morale. Thank you, Jana. So according to Lancioni, who published 22 years ago of the book, The Five Dysfunction of a Team, all teams have the potential to be dysfunctional. The reason why? Teams are made up of imperfect human beings. Low employee morale is often linked to this model as a symptom of the dysfunctional team. How to address the low team morale? Start from yourself. Ask yourself questions and be honest. When and how did you help your team colleagues? Do you actively participate in your retrospectives and listen actively? Do you know who the end users of your product are? When was the last time you shared or exchanged knowledge with your team members? Do not wait for others to begin. Start from yourself and be the role model. By being proactive and demonstrating positive behaviors, managers can become role models for their team and contribute to improving the overall team morale. Start with trust. Teamwork begins with building trust. Show to the team that you are also vulnerable. It is okay to be human. For example, share a story or mistake you made and what you learned from that mistake. Next step, no blame game. When errors happen, focus on finding solutions instead of blaming others. You always can ask how to fix that problem instead of who did this. And active listening. Give full attention when somebody is speaking and ask sincere questions. Show empathy. So to the next slide, we have there now topic of collaboration where I would like to highlight a um, remark from Henry Ford. Coming together is the beginning. Staying together is the progress. And working together is the success. Good collaboration in a team is our success. How should the ideal collaboration in IT environment look like? The Agile Manifesto mentions the ideal picture following way. Build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. Business people and developers must work together through daily, throughout the project. In our daily life, every lead can embrace the teamwork. And that's by showing empathy, offering support and celebrating success together. We should collaborate during activities like writing and improving user stories, other requirements, acceptance criteria, sprint goals, while also encouraging knowledge sharing. Open communication is crucial with the focus on active listening, transparency, and the usage of meetings as dailies. Customer collaboration is emphasized by involvement of our stakeholders, customers, seeking direct engagement and advocating for their needs. And continuous improvement. It should be always in our focus with the reflection on in retrospectives and culture of learning from mistakes and experimentation. All those activities and steps are part of learning journey for you for every team member and also for your business partners. And next challenge, Jana, go ahead. Oh yeah, next challenge number four will be about how to measure the success. And before speaking how to measure the success, let's also check with you how people think what success is. And here also, let's refer to the 70th annual state of Agile report. What we can see. So 36% uh, of people mentioned that they measure the velocity. And this is the indication of success, which means the greater the velocity is, the better. 29% of people measure the value that was delivered. Probably also how they measure this value. Probably they get the user feedback 
or probably they have a specific field in their items like features, for example, and they uh, measure this value before, before the implementation mean. 25% of people mentioned predictability as a measure of success. And you see that they compare the planned and done ratio. Other people mentioned sprint burn down report, epic and release burn down, productivity, or it can be also cycle time, lead time, or whatever you call it. Throughput, your stability, Deployment frequency, escape defects, change failure rate. Here we speak about the quality and cumulative flow. So, in fact, you see a lot, a lot of output metrics. Uh, let's now check with you what success criteria for agile leadership we can suggest. You can measure a lot of areas and use different techniques. So, first of all, you can measure team engagement. You can assess team engagement and motivations through surveys, conversations, one-to-ones, retrospectives. And here you need to look for the signs like high moral, collaboration, and ownership. After that, we can also measure delivery of value. And for measuring this area, we can track the KPIs like customer satisfaction, on-time delivery, number of features delivered per iteration, and focusing on delivery, of course, high quality products and services that meet customer needs. A lot of people may ask, what kind of metrics should I use on my project? To be honest, it's very difficult to answer this question. Probably it would depend on your co context, on some customer requirements, and on um, uh, some specific points from, from your project. But probably to give you some ideas, you could refer to the safe documentation to measure and grow article. You can refer to the evidence-based management guide. It's uh, something that was made by Scrum Org. You can also, uh, I can also mention Kanban official guide um, uh, that was issued by Kanban University. And also, if you are working in IPAM, we have a very great KB page in the DM handbook with a lot, a lot of metrics and their description. The third area, this is the adaptability and continuous improvement. And you can evaluate the team's ability to adapt and improve processes. You can look for the experimentation, learning from failures, and feedback loops. The first point, this is the employee satisfaction. You can measure your team member satisfaction, work-life balance, opportunity for growth. And the last but not least, this is the collaboration and communication. You can evaluate the effectiveness of your collaboration and communication through different iteration, interactions, collaborative tools, and transparency. And look, of course, for the open communication, knowledge sharing, and culture of trust. Let's try to answer with you the question how we need to measure, what kind of steps we need to do. So the first step is define success criteria. You need to clearly state what your goals and objectives are. You should include, of course, something like fostering collaboration, empowering team members, promoting continuous improvement, and delivering the value to the customer. The next step would be assessing team engagement. So uh, you need to use the indicators like active participation, enthusiasm, ownership, etc. The, uh, the next step would be uh, monitoring team performance. Yeah? You can track the KPIs such as velocity, cycle time, throughput, or any other metrics that are important in your context. And you can check whether agile practices implemented on your project uh, helps you to deliver the commitment. The next step would be evaluate customer satisfaction. You can measure customer satisfaction through the feedback surveys with the metrics like net promoter score or other method to determine if the team's agile approach meets customer needs and delivers value. The next step would be assess adaptability and learning. Uh, you can evaluate the team's ability to adapt to changing requirements and learn from feedback. And the last but not least, recognition and celebration. 
just try to celebrate with your team even the minor, minor victories so that your team knows that they are on the right way. And that was it. And now Zuzana will present you the summary. Thank you, Yana. We prepared also the short summary of the most important takeaways. Aligned autonomy is crucial for your team. Start from yourself, be a role model for others. Another one, collaboration is the key to our success. Being agile means to have growth mindset that allows you to be flexible and embrace change. Effective planning is part of agile software development. Reach out to your Scrum Master, he can always help you, for example, with estimations. Success of your agile leadership can be measured. And never forget to celebrate the success with your team. Thank you, and now let's start with our Q&A. Thank you, colleagues. So we have several questions in our chat. Uh, the first question is, in your experience, what strategies or approaches have most been successful in fostering a culture of agility within an, an organization? OK, maybe I could try out. So how we actually understand um, organizational agility. Yeah, th this is a capability of an organization to react quickly and effectively to respond to the market, industry, our customers. So it means we need to be flexible, adaptable. And what I would always suggest to implement agile methodologies, but not only on the level of our projects or customers, but also on our level its own in our company, for example, adapt and engage our mindset on levels of not only common employee, but all managers. Yeah. So, and never forget fostering a culture of innovations and collaboration that everyone has a chance to speak up, tell their own new ideas, maybe technical new ideas. And also this um, organizational agility comes out through investing in technology infrastructure that supports agility. Maybe, Jana, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, I would like to add one point. And sorry, colleagues, we are working in the safe environment with Susanna. That is why probably in my speech and now in my answers, I will mention some, um, I will refer sometimes to the safe. Uh, so probably you know that also in safe, we always start uh, the formation of our art from the value stream identification. In my opinion, working in a scale environment, working on the enterprise level, it's very important. Yes, yeah, start with the, this um, value stream identification to understand where is the beginning of value chain creation and where is its end yeah? and to set up the art or the teams accordingly. Yeah? If you don't work in the safe envir environment, it's of course also okay. But in this case, in the organization, we need to have a kind of lens just to see the organization from, from a little bit high level to understand how the value is created. And after that, just to form your teams. And also, I like something that Zuzana, you mentioned that today it's impossible probably to be uh, competitive without uh, technical agility, without technical excellence. Yes, CI CD approach, uh, automation test, uh, testing, um, other en engineering excellence techniques. Yeah, they would be great. Perfect. Thank you. So, the next question how to calculate velocity of the team in Kanban? May I start answering? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so, of course, <laughs> if we speak about <laughs> the pure theory in Kanban, probably we won't have any kind of velocity, yeah, because the main the main metric in Kanban this is the throughput. Yeah, so it means how many items you can finish within a specific period of time. For example, within a 
week or within a month, etc. It depends how you work. Uh, but um, yeah, pro probably if still you calculate the velocity and this is your approach, yeah, because Kanban doesn't set us what you what you need to do exactly. Yeah? It's not like Scrum where it's written that if you do not do this way, like it described in the book, you do not do Scrum. Yeah, Kanban always says us start with what you have. So if this is your approach to, to have the velocity to estimate the items in, let's say, story point or whatever, probably just take um, the iterations that you have. Yeah, I don't know also how you work. Um, uh, do you have just this iteration which lasts one week or two weeks or three weeks? Yeah, and probably just to, to have the items there and to calculate the velocity inside it. It shouldn't be very difficult in my opinion. But uh, if, if, yeah, if we speak about the theory, oh. there is no strict rules for that. Yes, sorry, Susanna, for interrupting me. Well, we just loved at the beginning of this question because actually this is a common question for us in the sub agile community. So if you have more, please join us. Yeah, a little commercial here. And uh, my answer, what I saw in practice in operational teams, actually checking how many tasks they uh, done in one day, what I saw as um, what can be measured. It really up, um, up to what do you need? What are you looking for? What sh would you like to reach out with this measurement? So we could talk about it a little bit longer, also inside of our sub community. Perfect. Thank you. One more commercial, by the way, while people are generating new questions. Uh, we are encouraging uh, you to join our community on other social platforms like Facebook, Telegram, LinkedIn, and of course, we're a community platform. There are the links in the chat. And of course, join the community that goes already presented. And the next question, what are some common mistakes that agile leaders make and how to avoid them? I would think like sometimes it can happen that the leaders are not aware of agile or are not seeing the benefit of it based on previous maybe negative experiences or too long safe meetings, for example. And um, another problem is that the agile transformation is done as top down initiative. Sometimes you, uh, agile is also about uh, the um, positive effect to speak up, tell your own ideas and to share it inside of your own community or team. And it's better to have it as um, down up initiative with your own ideas as a way of uh, getting better. Also, what we mentioned inside of our um, presentation is that we do not have often work, uh, work agreements like uh, they are not defining not enough defined expectations what are individual responsibilities what you should do and if there are then sometimes uh, the leaders are not using their possibilities to learn um, how to delegate that i would say this is quite often a big struggle Okay, Anna, go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> so the first idea that came to my mind, it's especially about, let's say, young Scrum Masters, for example, or uh, Agile Masters, that people would like to implement everything, everything by the book. They don't pay any attention to the context, to the people they work with, but they come to the team and say, so tomorrow <laughs> I will do here to make uh, to work everything uh, in the right way. In my opinion, this is a big mistake. Uh, also in Nepal, we have very experienced uh, agile coach. I visited a lot of training, his trainings, and he also mentioned that uh, in the beginning of his career, he also wanted to do this way. But after that, he understood that the framework, it's just the tool. Yeah, it's not something that is absolutely important. The most, the most important stuff, this is your context. That's why I, I like very much this principle coming from Kanban, start with what you have. Um, yes, yeah, so if you would like to change something, first of all, see what is important for your team. Yeah, check it uh, like 
uh, also this um, approach for the evolutionary changes like stressor, reflection, leadership. So first of all, there should be a stressor. The team uh, shouldn't do not like something. Yeah, and after that, it will be quite easy. You wouldn't you wouldn't have any kind of, of resistance. But if you just come and would like to make everything perfect from tomorrow, probably it won't be very easy and it won't be a success. Mm, yeah, I also wanted to mention one more stuff. Uh -huh, yeah, it's, it's about uh, the improvement of processes. So sometimes we try to implement uh, the improvements, but on a particular, how to say, on a particular step that probably also is not the most important one. Uh, also, probably you may remember uh, the book by Eliyahu Goldratt, which is called The Goal. Uh, and here the theory of constraints is described. And we also know that uh, the team uh, is as weak as its weakest part. Yeah. So it means that sometimes we need to uh, improve not the whole system or not some part of the system, but try to find the weakest part of our system and to improve it. So yeah, that is from myself. Thank you. Yeah, and one more question. What books could you suggest uh, reading on these topics? My favorite book, which I start this topic with, is Agile Leadership Toolkit by Peter Koenig. And also, I found out a, a new great book. Uh, it's called The Professional Agile Leader, The Leader's Journey Towards Growing Mature Agile Teams and Organizations. So the name is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to read this through. It's wrote by Ron Eringa. Yeah, those are my two favorite books on that topic. Thank you, Jana. Uh, to be honest, I liked very much the book that I have just mentioned, The Goal by Liahu Goldratt, and mm -hmm. also the book that Zizana mentioned in her presentation uh, by Leoncioni, Five Dysfunctions of the Team. It's, it's a very easy one and yeah, a great one, in my opinion. So yeah, these are two of my favorite ones. Perfect. So I think that's it for today with the questions. I think we can share the titles of the book uh, with our follow-up. Yeah, by the way, uh, thanks a lot for, you, for, for such an interesting speech. And as already mentioned, the video recording will be sent to you separately. Colleagues, thanks a lot, everyone, for your participation and have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you.